This video contains discussion of sensitive topics that may be upsetting to some viewers. These viewpoints may be the result of misinformation. Remember to seek out experts and be critical of your own biases while forming an opinion. If you say, for example, I only date white people, why are you only dating yeah. white people? Every single time when you see some, someone who's a foreign national on TV, they're wacky. Instead of fighting the government for not doing service delivery, you're going to say whatever scraps we have, you're shared. Why are you taking my scraps instead of asking why am I getting scraps? Hi everyone, my name is Norma and you've already met me. Welcome back to Defining! Today we have a long-awaited episode of Defining Conversations brought to you by our faves over at Netflix. This is a show that unites people through deep and uncomfortable conversation. Today's episode is inspired by the new Netflix original, Collision, which is set in a post-apartheid South Africa, where a multi-car pileup in downtown Johannesburg causes the world of a corrupt businessman, a struggling artist, and a notorious gangster to collide. <laughs> The film explores the socio-political climate of South Africa and exposes us to the dingy underworld of Johannesburg. I enjoyed how this movie touched on quite a few topics including xenophobia, crime rates in South Africa and even the myth that is the Rainbow Nation. What have I told you about mixing with these kinds of people? Open your eyes, Dad! The future's changing! I thought it would be a great idea to continue the conversation and so to help me, I assembled this amazing panel. But before we meet them, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Hi, my name is Foyin OG or Miss OG if you nasty. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Inga but you probably know me as Inga underscore 8 on the gram. Hi guys, I'm Cass. I'm your favourite photographer, entrepreneur, law graduate from the 012. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what's up guys? My name is Bongali, the proudest South African guy at Iseka. I believe I'm a successful nation. A dream of 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 a Ooh, now that you've met my amazing panel, let's get right into it. So, my first question to you guys is, race influences my dating preferences. <laughs> Casper Bay. It's, it's, it's on in between, that's why I've been thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Because I've had experiences interracial and and um, obviously I'm my own race. Um, I think it, it's not necessarily a, a race thing, that's why I think, I think it's a cultural thing. In terms of even choosing someone in my own race, do they fit into my life? Will I be able to, I don't need to, I don't want to like, like, I have to pet you the whole time. Do you fit in? Can you can you be your own person? Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and in, in terms of that, then I don't think it's race. If you can be your own person in my space and I can be comfortable in your space and we can do it together, then I don't think there's anything in terms of race that, that can influence it. So let's say you find someone like that and then the person is saying, hey, can we do a love or celebration Would you? I would. I would <laughs> love it. I would love it. I think like I would like, like can they negotiate with my parents? Like, I would like some cows. Just want to something like that. Obviously, like. Matenas. 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 It's gonna come to me. It's gonna come to me. No, but I, I agree with everything you said. A friend told me a few days ago, we shouldn't politicize love, mm -hmm. and I, I definitely do agree. But also, we need to acknowledge that mm -hmm. race is so closely intertwined with culture, with practices, with way of life. And those things are important when looking for a romantic partner and to go there. If you say, for example, I only date white people, why are you only dating yeah. white people? Is it because maybe you have this idea that, that white people are superior and you have a very toxic mindset and a lot of unlearning to do? Then I think you must question yeah. yourself. A lot of what I've seen has to do with the depth that you get from your peers, how you're perceived in society, how that mm. white woman on your arm mm. can help you get ahead in life, how like I said, how those things I can influence that. your interactions mm. with your friends, your colleagues, your peers. So to say that your preference isn't valid, I'm not going to say it's not valid, mm. but I'm going to say that a lot of people need to interrogate yeah. why they choose who they mm. choose or why they're consistently attracted to the same type of person. It's like drinking coke your life inside of like Fanta. You've never, never tried this no, never never okay. 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 I want to actually talk about that. Wait. I disagree. I disagree with that statement okay. because I don't think it's about um, 
I've never tasted Fanta. I've seen other people taste Fanta. I didn't like their reaction. Mm. I don't want to put myself in that mm. position. Like I don't, I don't want to say that um, race actually does influence my dating preferences, but in a very specific way. Yeah. Other races, I'm very, very open to, but white people, I'm very, I'm very cautious. Very skeptical. I'm Why? very cautious because. I've seen how white people have hurt people in my life. I've seen how white people have hurt mm. me firsthand based on the fact that I am black, you know, and that trauma sits with you. Mm. And as much as I can see that, okay, Casper, I like Casper, he's hot. I wanna hang out with him, I wanna go on dates and this and this and that. I'm like, like yes. <laughs> but I'm always going to be so paranoid. I'm always gonna be cautious. Casper's gonna take me to his to friends, his friend, and I'm like, be thinking the whole time I'm going to be Casper can say race doesn't matter. But that's not true. Race will always matter somewhere. Yeah. Race is always, especially when you're in interactions with white people. Exactly. And I definitely agree with what you said, specifically <clears throat> past experiences and how you look at dating a white man. I mean, even personally, there was a time in my life when I was becoming very conscious and very aware of, of struggles that South Africans are facing and marginalized groups. And I was growing up in Cape Town. Mm. And at that time, and unfortunately, I was surrounded by a group of people who were very close-minded. They possessed a lot of political apathy. So in layman's terms, black struggles is not colored struggles. And it was so hard for me to comprehend that it left such a sour taste in my mouth that today, I'm not necessarily looking twice when I see a, a colored person romantically because it's left me with such a, a, a bad experience, yes. And it's sad, but I mean, that's what it is. And it's yeah. unfortunate, but it's our reality. Yeah, we have to just be a bit more woke. You have yeah. to think a lot harder. Not to say that you cast people aside, but it's like now you have to think twice. There's a lot of labor. Yeah. 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 All right, I'm coming on a different perspective, right? And that's the same man. That's the same man. That's the same man. This is my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. I mean, tie it to my own personal opinion. I was that's right. That is my <laughs> Yeah, the reason yeah. why ne? I, I would only date a black woman in this case mm -hmm. is because of the package that comes in. Yes. You know? yes. it's, 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 it's a brush that Sing comes rest. in with the package. It's that P. You know when you're pushing the P? Ah, that's <laughs> ratio is on another level. Ooh. That's what you mean. <laughs> nah, when you have personality, what well, I mean, P. Mr. Dinu, how are you? Uh, Balisa, uh, it's good to see you again. Hi, Adam. Can't even tell you what I'm going to do. No, hey, I'm going to go to the house. 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 I believe that foreign nationals are fairly and accurately represented in South African media. Wait, repeat the question again. This I is think... <laughs> yeah? I think my answer is already said. Foreign talking. nationals yeah. are fairly and accurately represented in South African media. Um, I think the truth. Mm -hmm. Same, I, like I need to... I yeah. Think I need to, we need to evolve a bit more on the question. Are we just speaking about um, this is a xenophobia question in terms of our African national brothers and sisters coming in this side trying to find work and proper opportunities. Or are we talking just in general? Before we even go to like what we see, are we, are we, are we just mm. selling the, the wrong type of idea of what other people are experiencing? Do you know what? The think? fact that you can't even answer this question is your answer. Because the way that the portrayal happens in the media is that you either get the no, one thing that's happening right now, very prevalent, is the crime aspect. Mm. You get the foreigners are coming here to take our jobs, take our women, put drugs into our children, and destroy our cities. So I have and to do agree with that. Wait, wait, the way you're going on about it, man, you, you want to take it from like a psychology that we've been fed off, man. The thing is, when it comes to foreign nationals, one thing for sure, like if, I don't know if you guys have watched collusion, but for sure, is that one thing I saw as a true representation that all these foreign nationals, one thing for sure is that they work, they come here to work, that's for sure. That's one thing that's common. That's what the media is feeding us, that these people are forever coming here to work. 
And the problem is that I know us as South Africans were lazy. That's why we hate when it comes to those things. But is it fairly presented in that aspect? Yes, sure. Every single time when you see some someone who's a foreign national on TV, they're working. I think. I, oh, I don't even think I finished my thought because <laughs> my point was more so that that is one of the most prevalent media depictions of yeah, it's one yeah. That's yeah. The, and then especially one when you yeah. see with yeah. all of the political and socio-economic strife that's going on in the country right now and the emergence of movements like Operation Dudula that is a very prevalent um, storyline yeah. that foreign nationals are given and whether or not it has some truth to it because come on everyone is a criminal like everyone well, does I have have everyone. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone does yeah, yeah, yeah. Does I'm not criminal no every <laughs> nationality does crack mm -hmm. but it's the fact the fact that it's foreign nationals mm -hmm. that are highlighted as the root of South Africa's crime problem mm -hmm. that is what I mean mm -hmm. is like the, the narrative I, 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 yeah. I just also want to add to that and say that sometimes it's not necessarily the narrative that they're giving us it's the kind of people that they're showing us yeah there are so many countries in this continent and every single time we see a foreign national, they're either Zimbabwean or Nigerian. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's either one of these two, or maybe Kenyan. Oh, guys, what about Pakistan? About my friends. What about Pakistan? No, I mean, I mean in media. Yes. I'm talking yeah. about in media. Those are the kind of foreign nationals that they show us. It's like all of them are a monolith, yes. which I don't think is necessarily a fair representation of them. Yes. So for that reason, I'm going to disagree based on my question. I think that there are so many other layers yes. that we can discuss in terms of how they represent them um, in relation to crime and things like um, how they represent them in terms of taking jobs. I'm like, which jobs are they taking? Do you understand? <laughs> Not even going into the, the specific topics about like how they represent them. I think media needs to sell headlines yes. and headlines yes. needs to be provocative yes. or they need to mm -hmm. eat and nerve and that's, and that's where why. we're going to say obviously there is no fair representation probably or how they are put into the media because people want you to be disturbed mm -hmm. about this the statement yeah. so you're going to read the article what yeah. because what if someone's like that's there are a bunch of nigerians who are doing fine but there's a few who are doing crime and that's bad but there's also a few south africans who are doing crime and actually there's like just a few oats who are doing crime that doesn't mean anything to people but exactly. if you're like three nigerians were arrested for oh, crime outrage. then people will be like yeah you exactly. see exactly. Yeah. that's, that's mm. the that's the outcome of having a single narrative exactly. that doesn't speak to all um, the voices and everything that's going on and I mean constantly having the single narrative it feels yes. so much anger it, it, it just creates so much chaos all right let me ask this question guys have you guys had any headline out of not in South Africa about a South African somewhere else in the world have you guys read a story this past month yes, yes. about someone who's in another country doing crime yes, yes. This is me, so. Guys, people love crime, okay? Hey? Not necessarily. They love crime. Mm -hmm. but, but people also have outside foreign countries that have a bad view mm -hmm. about South yes. Africans visiting mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, so I think what we are doing to our own foreign nationals, how we just it's so cool. Yeah. But, but in it's terms of. perpetuate the problem, basically. But so, guys, yeah. It's not perpetuating the problem, it's literally how it is. We have a very um, negative approach to people who are like us. But the foreign nationals who are not like us. Rishab, we're fine with them. Why? So is it xenophobia or is it Afrophobia? Yeah, it's Cape Town is the greatest example of this because if you go to Camps Bay versus if you go to Kalicha, mm. as a foreigner, it depends what type of foreigner you are. Yeah. If you're a white foreigner in Camps Bay, no one bats an eyelid. Those guys are overstaying their tourist visas, coming in every three months, <laughs> buying houses, doing whatever. No one bats an eyelid. God forbid a Somali opens a corner store in Kalicha. It's tears. Mm -hmm. It's child. Someone will come and burn down your house. Exactly. Someone will come and attack you. And that just goes to show like the, the socioeconomic influences mm -hmm. that also impact xenophobia and Afrophobia. Because it's it's really a case of scapegoatism and we've seen this throughout history that whenever things are bad and times get tough instead of fighting the higher power who's responsible for all of the problems you're gonna pick on the little guy because it gives you some sort of power so you're gonna fight the foreigner because they are in a more precarious situation than you they have less than you and it just makes you feel like you have more control over your situation instead of fighting the government for not doing service delivery you're gonna say whatever scraps we have you're shared why are you taking my scraps instead of asking why am i getting scraps xenophobia is really just misplaced anger yeah. Mm. It's really being directed at the wrong group of people. We, I mean, we all can see the news. Look at mm. our beloved. Oh, our beloved. Oh, cupcake. Sure. 
So you know, I really think that if we try and and focus our energy where it matters, and we can actually make a change. Because, like Foyan said, even if all these foreign nationals leave tomorrow, nothing's going to change because the problems are internal; they are systemic, and that's what we need to be fighting against. Hi. Hi. So you're our new token CFO. Excuse me. I'm just curious as to how it feels knowing you're going to be making money for work that someone else is doing. I believe that we can exist in a South Africa where race, nationality, and gender is a non-factor. Why do you guys think it's not possible? Um, you know, I think I think there is an aspiration to live in a society where those things are not hindrances, mm -hmm. but to pretend that they are not a factor is going to become dishonest and disingenuous mm -hmm. because the history of South Africa has made these things a factor. And even when we progress to a point where they aren't barriers to entry or problems, they're always still going to kind of matter. And they should matter because it's what makes us unique. It's all a part of our story. Mm -hmm. It's just that they shouldn't be used to our disadvantage. They shouldn't be a hindrance to us. They should actually help us. I yeah. know that, yeah. So, Nam, let's take it a bit back to school. Nam, I studied economics. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so there's, there's something on economics. So economics initially is a study of how individual or governments, organizations choose to use their scarce resources in order to satisfy their needs and wants, right? Mm -hmm. So, kiss mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so, in school. In that sense, that it's proven that you can never have an equal society anywhere in the world unless mm -hmm. you're in heaven. That's like yeah. a factor. Mm. It's the same thing that when a problem arises, it's oh, we choose on how we minimize it. Like COVID. COVID is forever going to be there. But the way we choose to minimize it, like now at least we're not wearing masks. Mm. Of which I'm thankful for. So the thing is, problems like that, they'll never go away. Yeah. Especially in South Africa. It's a problem that has been there. And the fact that that thing has been there for such a long time, it's not something that's going to go away anytime mm. soon. The only thing we can do is minimize, but can't go away. Mm. That's for sure. Yeah, I agree. I think um, sorry, Norma, I think in terms of when we get to the gender perspective of everything as well and we need to take that always as a factor. Um, I told Inga also earlier that um, my focus has shifted more to the queer um, space and the queer activism space of things. And I think me having to accept my identity in that, in that community as well and um, like just constantly learning um, of the identity, identif uh, um, the gender identifications and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think that also, and you know, in a society like South Africa, which is so conservative, gender there becomes very tricky because people don't, I've never got exposure to that. Mm -hmm. And I think that is where we are now that that will definitely still be a factor for many years to yeah. come to, to, to really learn about those factors and, and learn how to acknowledge them and accept them. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely do agree. I think at the end of the day, we must remember that as South Africans, our freedom was birthed from soils of, of discrimination, of segregation, of inequality. And those issues still persist yeah. today. And they are a large part of our society. So I think to not consider it and not co think about it, I mean, it's ridiculous. You can't. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think also just to come back to what you were saying, Casper, about learning about people's gender identities and also navigating activism in the queer space, um, I also realized that there isn't really a lot of language that we have yeah, in South exactly. Africa to teach our people about these things. And so that also limits the learning process. So yes, you can sit with someone and try and explain to them, but sometimes if there's no words for it in their language, yeah. it doesn't the culture, land, like, yeah, it doesn't culture land how we intend it. It's not like, like, like you said, we were bird through all these different inequalities and segregations because how the culture was like so deeply rooted in us and that's how our kids were like taught, how we were taught by our forefathers and parents and grandparents. So I think we, you were never exposed to that. I think varsity and these more open spaces where we can chat like this, yeah. like defining and like chatting about this, that's how we learn. That's how we expose people to these type of questions and, and topics so that they can learn more about it. And at the end of the day, we've seen that like Rainbow nationism and like non racialism <laughs> doesn't do anything, doesn't serve anything because it's like there's absolutely nothing wrong with acknowledging that we're different and mm -hmm. celebrating that we're different. Like, and um, trying to have a non racial view actually is a hindrance to that. It's like a colorblind, it's like a colorblind hat. I mean, it's so confusing. 
Yeah. Why are you trying to be colorblind? I'm not. 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 Wrong with acknowledging our differences. It's when you want to start discriminating and treating people differently because of that. Mm. That's the problem. Like that's the real issue. I would like to close off by saying that you know it is all of our responsibility to actually try and make this world yeah. a better yeah. place. You need to educate yourself on your biases. You need to educate yourself on your privileges. You need to educate yourself on you know the identities of other people so you can be accommodating yeah. to them. That is on you. Let me catch you being rude to someone. If I catch you, if I catch you, I will catch you. And on that note, thank you so much for watching our episode. I just want to say thank you to my lovely, 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 lovely panelists. You guys contributed so much. You gave so much. You didn't hold back. Thank you so much for sharing your personal experiences with us and trusting us with them. Please tell us that people can find you on socials. So um, I'm Casper underscore developer underscore CLW on the gram. I think that's the only one that you need to follow that <laughs> So that's me. I am Foyin OG everywhere. You can find me very easily. And Sim Day Sim Face starts next week. So let's catch you. Ooh, that's right. I'm ready. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Instagram, Inga underscore eight. It's I N G E underscore eight. And that's what matters. You catch me. It's Wangani underscore RSA everywhere except on TikTok. On TikTok, it's Wangani underscore official. Ooh. Just a PS, just a PS. I'm not in your vase, so I don't have a double S. It's ah. just ah. <laughs> That has been this episode of Defining Conversations. Don't forget to head over to Netflix and catch the new original Collision. Everything that we've spoken about here is touched on in that movie, and I really think that it's a great movie to watch in terms of starting the address of specific socio-political issues that we have in our country. Don't forget to like, to comment, and to subscribe! I don't agree with this. Is I've searched for so long to date someone. I've been single. I've been tendering. <laughs> I've been tender swindling with swindled, whatever. And you know what? The reason I'm in my relationship now is because I feel safe. Yeah. I can be myself. I don't have to worry what my parents earn. I don't have to worry where I stay, what car I drive, what clothes I wear, how big my six pack is. I feel safe. Yeah. And that is what I love about it. And I say there I disagree because if I can feel safe with someone, I don't care what's happening around me. Mm. I will be able to compromise on certain things. But I need to feel safe as a person. I want you to feel safe with yeah. me. And that's that's it for me. That's like my big thing. I like thing. that note.